Have you ever watched this gun for hire? If not, you're in for a ride. This 1942 movie packs in plenty of surprises from funny moments that'll have you chuckling to shocking scenes that'll leave you on the edge of your seat, not to mention some truly heart-wrenching ones. So keep your eyes peeled for what's to come. This gun for hire introduces us to a tough as nails hitman and a nightclub singer who find themselves tangled up in a web of espionage and danger. As the plot thickens, you'll find yourself drawn deeper into a world where nothing is quite as it seems. Now, when was the first time you watched this movie? Or is there a particular scene that still haunts your thoughts? Share your thoughts with us in the comments below. We'd love to hear your stories and memories. Keep watching for more fascinating tidbits about this gun for hire. There's plenty more where that came from. This Gun for Hire is a classic film noir that presents a straightforward yet engaging narrative. The storyline revolves around a small-time assassin portrayed by Alan Ladd, whose character is both menacing and compelling. Veronica Lake co-stars as the female lead, adding depth to the plot with her portrayal of a character caught up in the dangerous world of espionage and crime. The film's direction, though somewhat generic, effectively conveys the gritty atmosphere typical of the noir genre. Despite its age, the movie remains accessible to modern audiences, offering a glimpse into the tropes and themes prevalent in 1940s cinema. Ladd delivers a standout performance as the enigmatic protagonist, showcasing his versatility as an actor. Lake's character adds intrigue to the story, serving as both a love interest and a catalyst for the action. Overall, This Gun for Hire is a solid entry in the noir genre, featuring strong performances and a compelling narrative that keeps viewers engaged from start to finish. Whether you're a fan of classic cinema or simply looking for a well-executed thriller, this film is worth checking out. Paramount borrowed Laird Kreger from 20th Century Fox for the movie. The lead actress received two stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame for motion pictures at 681 24 Hollywood Boulevard and for television at 16715 Hollywood Boulevard in Hollywood, California. A photograph of his flogging in two years before the mast appears on the cover of the book Lash, the hundred great scenes of men being whipped in the movies. This gun for hire from 1942, once featured in Chesterfield Cigarettes advertisements. In 1951, RKO Radio Pictures attempted to produce a film noir called The Sins of Sarah Ferry, starring Larian Day, Fred McMurray, Yvonne DiCarlo, Hugh Beaumont, Glenn Ford, Howard Duff, and Evelyn Keyes. The plot centered around a courthouse clerk in Binghamton, New York, who falls for a beautiful liar accused of armed robbery and a fatal hit and run. However, the project fell through due to concerns about its similarity to double indemnity. The studio's attempt to secure permission to film in Binghamton was met with silence from the courthouse and then Mayor Donald Kramer. Faced with no response and inability to negotiate, RKO promptly canceled the project. Additionally, this gun for hire actor was screen tested for the role of Lola Dietrichson in Double Indemnity, a role ultimately given to Gene Heather. These events highlight the challenges and setbacks faced by the film industry, showcasing the delicate balance between creativity, originality, and logistical hurdles in film production. This Gun for Hire is a movie loosely based on a novel of the same name by Graham Greene. The original book, titled A Gun for Sale, was published in the UK in 1936 and in the US as This Gun for Hire in the same year. The story follows a hitman who gets double-crossed during a job and seeks revenge, the movie attended Lacant Middle School in Los Angeles, California. It is known for its gripping narrative and memorable characters. Throughout the film, he navigates through a world of betrayal and deception driven by his own code of honor. The protagonist's relentless pursuit of justice keeps viewers on the edge of their seats until the climactic conclusion. This Gun for Hire remains a classic example of film noir showcasing themes of morality and redemption amidst a backdrop of crime and corruption. This Gun for Hire, a 1942 movie, was adapted into a radio play for the Camel Screen Guild Players in 1948. The adaptation featured the original cast members, including her, Tony Martin and Peter Laura. In a tragic coincidence, she and Charles Wagenheim both died shortly after. Both under similar circumstances, they were beaten to death by burglars in their respective apartments. Their final appearance together was on an episode of All in the Family in 1979, just days before their deaths. The fictional nitrochemical company in the movie had its headquarters in the Richfield Tower, an art deco building in downtown Los Angeles. 
originally home to the Richfield Oil Company, it was demolished in 1969 after the merger with Atlantic Refining Company. Despite protest, the building was considered too small after the merger, making way for City National Plaza. In the early 1950s, this gun for hire and his wife Catherine, along with 16 friends, formed an acting group known as 18 Actors. The group aimed to gain theatrical experience with members including Dana Andrews, Charles Lane, and Victor Jory. Their productions were held in a state-donated building near the Rose Bowl. This gun for hire was a frequent attendee at director George Cukor's house meetings from the mid-1930s onwards. Cukor, once set to direct The Great Gatsby in 1926, inspired this gun for hire, who later starred in the 1949 remake. This gun for hire admired the 1926 version and hoped to establish himself as a serious dramatic actor. Regarding this gun for hire's personal life, her third husband, Joseph Allen McCarthy, wrote lyrics for songs by Cy Coleman, including I'm Gonna Laugh You Right Out of My Life and Why Try to Change Me Now, both sung by Frank Sinatra. Joseph McCarthy's father, Joseph McCarthy, was also a lyricist known for songs like You Made Me Love You and I'm Always Chasing Rainbows. This Gun for Hire is a 1942 film notable for several aspects. The lead actress had a childhood marked by parental separation, never reuniting with her father thereafter. She speculated in her autobiography that he likely passed away before she gained fame in the film industry. In a pivotal scene, the protagonist, Raven, takes Ellen hostage after a confrontation with the police at a club. Seeking refuge, Raven guides Ellen to hide in a warehouse where they face the obstacle of scaling a wall. Despite the tense situation, Raven assists Ellen in climbing, cautioning her to wait for him at the top and not to flee. Ellen's response references Whirlaway, a celebrated American racehorse that achieved the U.S. Triple Crown victory in 1941, a year prior to the film's release. McDonald Carey was considered for a role in the film, specifically the part eventually played by Robert Preston. Interestingly, Carey would later appear alongside Alan Ladd, the star of this gun for hire in The Great Gatsby, portraying Nick Carraway. This gun for hire remains a significant piece of cinematic history for its compelling narrative and notable performances, offering viewers a glimpse into the era's filmmaking prowess and storytelling techniques. Before starring on The Monsters, this gun for hire lead actress was deeply in debt and struggling with depression. She received guidance from acting coach George S.H. Danoff, who mentored her in techniques for inner motivation, body movement, and vocal ease, preparing her for challenging roles in Criss Cross and The Ten Commandments. Italian actress Sophia Loren admired her deeply, considering her favorite actress alongside Rita Hayworth. The admiration was mutual, as evidenced by a photograph of DiCarlo and Loren posing with Gina Lollibrigida at the 1954 Berlin Film Festival.